We we'll pray. Amen. This is part four of the series we started taking from the Sunday services from the beginning of the month, titled "Unveiling Our Breakthrough Limit Heritage in the World." Unveiling our breakthrough limit heritage in the Word of God. Praise the Lord. We are looking at our limit-breaking heritage from the mirror of the Word of God. No mirror tells lies. Praise the Lord. Any good mirror tells it as it is. You may argue, but the mirror will not say anything. If you refuse to take action based on what you see, if you don't like it, you come back to the same mirror. It will still show you the same image. Praise the Lord. It's my prayer that as we look into this mirror, the Bible calls it the perfect love liberty, and take corrective measures. God will be, God will be glorified and you will be blessed. Amen. James chapter 1, from verse 22 to 25. It says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. For he beholded himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetted what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Praise the Lord. The emphasis here in verse 25 is continue it. We continue in the looking and continue in the doing. This man will be blessed. You will enter this company of the blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Now there's a few things we need to look at about the word of God or the mirror of the world. The word of God is light that confers dominion in the world of darkness. The word of God is light that confers dominion in the world of darkness. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What's the power of his might? Romans 1:16. Say, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the word of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not, we wrestle, we wrestle not, we wrestle, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. He says, put on. After commanding me and you to be strong in the Lord and in the word of his power, he commanded us again to put on the armor of God. What's an armor? An armor is a protective covering. You know, you look at those Roman soldiers, they wear armor. Praise the Lord. Because there's an attack. That armor protects you from the attack. What's the armor they're talking about? Romans chapter 13, verse 12. Romans 13, verse 12. It says, the night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Praise the Lord. For the word of God to confer dominion, it must be seen as an armor. Praise the Lord. Armor of light. Praise the Lord. The word of God is light that confers dominion. Any word of God you receive and practice supernaturally puts an armor on you that protects you against the attack of the devil. Also, the word of God is described as the sword of the spirit. A lot of those armor, if you read them, are protective armor. But the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, is offensive 
weapon. Praise the Lord. So with that, you command dominion. Any word you obey protects you. Put an armor on you. You may look foolish doing it, but if God opens your eye, you will see yourself wearing armor. Husband, love your wife. If you continue to love her, you are wearing an armor. Wife, submit yourself to your husband in all things. You do it consistently with all of your heart, you are wearing an armor. Praise the Lord. That conflict will not consume you when you are wearing an armor. Please see obeying God as wearing an armor. If you don't know what armor is, go, go and check Google all those Roman soldiers. You will see how they, they are cladded. Praise the Lord. Protective armor. That's what the word of God confers on you. Number two. There is inbuilt speed in the word of God. There is inbuilt speed in the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Praise the Lord. Moreover, maybe there were other words that have been coming that were contrary. But the word of God came to him and said, What seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well. Because you have seen well, I will hasten my word to perform it. Praise the Lord. I will hasten my word to perform it. Many times we think that God is not quick. And we rush to other forms of help. Praise the Lord. But God said, once you see it, I will hasten it. So my responsibility and yours is to sit down and see it. Praise the Lord. Psalm 147 verse 15 says, He sent forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. His word runs how? Very swiftly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, if you are a child of God, God lives in you with all the power of heaven inside you. Praise the Lord. But you need to sit down with that word until it reforms your thinking. Now, the book I'm reading called Led by the Spirit by, by Billy Joe Doherty. The man said, the image you hold in your mind will eventually dominate your spirit, either to obey God or to disobey him. The image you have in your mind. Nothing forms better image than the word of God. But that image of or your victory in that area will not form. That picture will not crystallize if you don't continue in the world. As powerful as God is, we can limit him by our mentality. Philemon 14 said, Paul said, I can, without your mind, I can do nothing. Praise the Lord. Yes, your spirit is loaded with the things of God, but it can come out, it, the passageway is through your mind. Praise the Lord. You can give tithes and offering if your mentality is not changed. That this will lead to my prosperity. That offering will not yield. Praise the Lord. God can be suppressed by our mentality. That's why we need to sit down continuously until this word establish, registers in our heart. Praise the Lord. Now, look at this. The word of God is a weapon of war that never returns defeated from any battle. Good. Praise the Lord. The word of God is a weapon of war that never returns undefeated from any battle. First Samuel chapter 17.
Goliath cost David and David cost back. But let's see something that is behind all those. I will read from 41 to 51. I'll be fast. And the Philistine, talking about Goliath, came and drew near unto David. And the man that bare his shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the earth and to the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with thy sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host, all these armies that are around, of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the earth. And the wild beasts of the, of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not by sword or spear. Praise the Lord. For the battle is the Lord's, and he, will, and he will give you into my hands. And it came to pass that the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David. And David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag took then a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the, to, the, to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him and there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of the shield and therefore and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw the champion was dead, they fled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now the background of this story is this. David came to the war front unprepared. Praise the Lord. Every of this word he spake or he spoke was not planned. He was speaking from his heart. Praise the Lord. He wasn't documented. When this, this is what I would say. No, he came from his heart. How did he enter his heart? Because he sat down with the word of God. In an emergency, what you have rehearsed will evaporate. Praise the Lord. Go and read Luke chapter 1 and hear what Mary, the mother of Jesus, spake. Praise the Lord. The other, the spirit of God came upon them and they began to speak. But she spoke out of her heart, out of the abundance that she had. There were many virgins in Israel. Who was the mother of Jesus? The one that was prepared. In their days, you have to be a virgin to get married. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, they will stone you. So Mary was not just the only virgin. Go and read Luke chapter 1 and see what was coming out from the young lady's mouth. Scriptures upon scriptures rolling out. Praise the Lord. David never planned for any of these words. But it came out from his heart. Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. But please, you don't, it's not at the war front that you begin to rehearse. Praise the Lord. It is not at the war front that he began to rehearse. For a young man to pursue a lion and kill a lion all by yourself in the desert, no help. Something must have entered your heart. Something must have emboldened you. For you to see a bear and go after it because it took a lamb and you, and you killed it. All by yourself. Something must have entered your heart. Praise the Lord. He came to Goliath. Even so, the king was running. When Goliath comes like this, they will run away. And a little boy that had the word of God filled, had his heart filled with the word of God, confronted him. He said, you come to me with sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord of God of hosts, whose army you have defiled. Praise the Lord. Those words were not planned. Please sit down. And settle down with the word of God. In an emergency, what comes out is what is in your heart. Praise the Lord. The word of God is a solution bank to all situations and circumstances of life. Jesus said in Matthew 
11, 28, come and learn of me. Nobody goes to school on behalf of anyone. You want to be a doctor? You have to learn it by yourself. Praise the Lord. Our father in the Lord was uh, 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 saying in the first service, he said, I cannot prophesy to you and become a pilot. Say, I, now I lay hands on you, you are now a pilot. No, even if you wear their uniform, you won't know what to do. You need to learn of Jesus. Learning is not, learning is like, learning, learning connotes taking time out. You come to Wolf B for one week, it's a crash program. You go to university to learn. One year after another. Praise the Lord. One year after another. Paul went to one school of Tyrannos and was there for years until the whole Asia was filled. Praise the Lord. All these flash um, um, things that come by like, like flight by night. No, that's not it. Praise the Lord. You need to sit down and learn. You want to learn a trade? It takes time to learn a trade. You want to learn a profession? It takes time. Bible calls Christianity a profession. It takes time to learn. You need to take time out and learn. Like people that go to school and wake up at night and read. Only once you continue with these things, this word will register in your heart. Praise the Lord. It will register in your heart. David was a young boy. Unrehearsed. Came face to face with a Goliath. Goliath's advantage is not just his size. He was a champion of the Philistines. Philistines are very, very warlike. And yet, a champion among them. That will tell you how how, how, um, um, how proficient he is in war. And yet, a little boy with the word of God beat him hands down. Praise the Lord. The word of God is a solution bank. And Luke 5.5, 5, Simon answering and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word. I will let down the net. Nevertheless, at your word. They, Peter, in my own thinking, would have sat down because he was, he was, a, he was a captive uh, audience. You know, he's, he, he can't go because his, his boat is being used. Praise the Lord. So he sat there and was looking at Jesus and seeing the effect of the word that was happening in the crowd. He sat there and was looking and was seeing the effect. He said, nevertheless, at your word. I will let down the net. And when he did, he caught multitude of fishes. That verse 8 says, And when Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me. I am a man of sinful. God will give you fearful blessings today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. As he sit down and consume the word of God, God will give you fearful blessings. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But to access the word of God, the God's plan for your life from his word, we must do the following. Number one, we must remain joyful. We must remain joyful. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Praise the Lord. No plant grows fruit until it's mature. Joy is one of the fruits of the spirit. No tree, he is divine and we are the branches. Where, do, where does um, fruits grow? On the branches. For most plants. Praise the Lord. For you to bear fruit, you must be mature. For you to mature, you must sit down with this word continuously. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. It's not happiness. Praise the Lord. It's not fleeting. Joy is not dependent on circumstances. Joy is a fruit of a mature tree. It's a fruit of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 29 says, And ye shall have a song. As in the night when the holy solemnity is kept. And gladness of heart. As one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord. To the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard when you come joyfully. Praise the Lord. And verse 31 said, through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down. Through the voice. You will be joyful to hear the voice of God. And once you hear the voice of God... And you do what he says. The Assyrian. That situation will be beaten down. Praise the Lord. So you don't know what you are doing to yourself when you are sorrowful. Praise the Lord. Be joyful. You must come with joy. It's through joy that you hear from God. 
Praise the Lord. You can pray 24 hours without hearing from God. But joy. True joy. And the God which will cause his glorious voice to be heard. And once you hear that voice and you obey, the Assyrian will be beaten down. Psalm 16 verse 1, verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And as right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You will bring joy before you come to his presence. And when you manage to succeed to come, you will collect the fullness of joy in his presence. But that joy is like, it's like you know, it's like a priming. Praise the Lord. Many years ago, where I come from, if you have a, a borehole and then there's a, a type of pump you have, some pump to build all the pressure head, you need to pour water. You are looking for water, but you have to sacrifice water. You prime it. You build up a pressure head for it to be able to draw water. You must come with your own joy to prime God's one. You must come with your joy. And when you enter his presence, you collect the fullness of joy. You must come with your own. You must prime his own. That's how God is. Praise the Lord. You can't say, God, you have abundance. Give me small. No, come with your own first. Praise the Lord. You must come with yours to collect his abundance. Praise the Lord. So it's a decision. Whether you will allow, you see, all the heroes in the Bible, all of them passed through life-threatening issues, and yet, they were not sad. Praise the Lord. Our bishop said, have I seen challenges? When you see challenges, ask him whether he has seen challenges. But he doesn't share them. Praise the Lord. Through the joy, he hears the voice of God, and all the Assyrians are beating down. Praise the Lord. And that will be your group. Portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, one must connect with the teaching ministry of the priesthood. Second Chronicles 15, 3 to 7. It says, Now for a long season, Israel has been without God, without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without a law. The law was that they neglected this law for a very long time. Look at what happened to them. And in those days, verse 5. There was no peace to him that went out and for him that came in. Great vexation was upon them, all inhabitants of the country. Nations destroyed nations, city and destroyed city, and God did vex them. If you stay, they stayed long without God. God is there, but they ignored him. The law is there, they ignored him. The teachers are there, they were not listening to them. For a very long season, and great vexation came upon them. People make mistakes. All of us do make mistakes. But run back before you tarry long. If you persist in sin, you'll be vexed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you persist in your wrongdoing. Now, if you're going to, if this is the wrong way to go to Scotland, if this is the way to Scotland and you're facing this, when will you get there? If you persist on your way. It's forever journey. But it's never too late to be right in the words of our presiding bishop. Praise the Lord. It's never too late. But they stayed a long season without God, without the teaching priest, without the law, and they were vexed. Praise the Lord. But see what Isaiah 30, verse 20 to 21 said. And through the Lord, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, and the water of affliction, yet shall thy teachers not be removed into a corner. Thy eyes shall see thy teacher. Once your eyes see your teacher, your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, my son, my daughter, this is the way you walk in it. When you turn to the right and turn to the But your eye must see your teacher. Praise the Lord. Now, to see your teacher is so important that no adversity can blind your eyes to your teachers. Praise the Lord. He says, though the Lord give them bread of adversity and water of affliction, yet your teacher will not be sidetracked. No matter the affliction that comes, the, the devil has not manufactured that affliction that will blind your eyes to your teacher. So even in your affliction, you will see your teacher. Praise the Lord. Jody Austin, John Austin's mom, 
was uh, diagnosed of cancer. All manner of prayer had gone, and they gave him up to die. In, he, in her affliction, she chose, brought out 40 scriptures from the Bible that promised her healing, meditated upon them, and gave herself entirely to those scriptures. And cancer vanished. Praise the Lord. In her affliction, in her pain, she found her teachers. Praise the Lord. So it's not, there is no pain, unfortunately. There is no excuse that is tenable not to find your teachers. Praise the Lord. Even in the affliction, you can find your teacher. Now you are not afflicted. Won't you find your teacher? Won't you go after your teacher? Praise the Lord. Who goes to exam when it's just a few days and, see, and you go to um, crash, crash? Uh, this. How many first class students do you see who crash? They are reading. They are diligent. For the most part, they are diligent. Very, very diligent. More diligent than others. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are diligent, you stand before kings. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. And I will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when you have multiplied and increased in the land, say the Lord, that you shall. See, when God, God says he will give you pastors after his heart. Praise the Lord. You pay heed to them, you will multiply. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't put them aside. Don't put them aside. It's one of the gateways that God has shown us. God gave a word to Jacob and is lighted upon Israel. Look at the word that God has given Bishop Dr. Bish, uh, Dr. Yedipo and see what he is doing all over the world. Praise the Lord. See what God tells him that he tells us to deliver. Praise the Lord. If you pay, how, how many testimonies will you hear? I caught a word from the altar. I caught a word from the altar. And I did it. And testimony came. Praise the Lord. Because when God has given us a pastor, after his heart, he will multiply us through that pastor. By a prophet, Israel was brought out of it. By a prophet, they were preserved. God has given us a teacher, a pastor, a prophet, in the person of Dr. David Oedipo. If you pay heed to what he says, or whoever is representing him at any point, whether it's WSF or church, or your departmental meeting, if you pay heed, you'll be blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today is our covenant day of exemption. All through scripture, there are peculiarities. We have peculiarities as believers. We have things that are peculiar to us. We have things that are particular to us. One of those is that every believer is a new creature. All things have passed away. Things that used to happen to you have now passed away. Praise the Lord. Now, most believers think of themselves as, for example, this podium, if it gets damaged and you put it back together, it's a, it will become a refurbished podium, not a new one. But if you bring one brand new one from the factory, it's a new one. Praise the Lord. Now, because your body didn't change, you didn't get lighter, you didn't get darker after you got born again, you still think that you are the old self. No. Once you're born again, you're a new creature. The day you got born again, you are severed from every evil. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Number two, every child of God has been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Therefore, the torment and the torture of darkness has no more legal right over you. Don't get fooled by that word translated. Transferred is the same word transferred. You have been transferred. Praise the Lord. You have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. Praise God. The, our police, their heart is very unique. Praise God. If you wear it in this country, you want the police impersonation. You will come against the law. But if you cross the border, the nearest nation to this, once you cross Dover to France and you wear it, it can become fashion item. Because it's no longer in the kingdom where it carries power. The same way you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. 
why are believers then tormented? Because the devil will be from outside throwing stones in form of thoughts. He can give you 10,000 thoughts in a minute. Things that will conflict with the word of God. He gives you so much. If you, if you, if you listen to him and keep listening, he will give you so much that it will overwhelm what you have had. He will give you an image that will suppress your spirit to disobey God. But if you stay in this word of God and counter all those thoughts with the word of God, he will be helpless towards you. From today, he will be helpless towards you. Every believer is redeemed, a peculiar being, and what happens to others, when I mean others, unbelievers, will not happen to you. Second, First Peter 2, 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has called us out of darkness. The devil is the ruler of darkness. Praise the Lord. But God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Praise the Lord. Maybe you have a boss here in London and then you are transferred to Manchester. Praise God. So the moment you leave, somebody else takes your desk and inherit that manager. Praise the Lord. When you go to Manchester, that manager doesn't have a right over you. If there's something he needs to ask you with your old job, he will beg you. No matter how arrogant he was when you were in London. Praise the Lord. We have been transferred. Praise the Lord. For example, German police, if you have done anything, can't come here and arrest you. He needs to walk through the British police. They have to have an agreement between UK and Germany for that to happen. God and devil, do they have any agreement? Light and darkness, do they have any agreement? Will devil go and tell God, let me arrest him? No way. Praise the Lord. So that should give you confidence that you are in a kingdom where he can't reach you. All he will tell you is give you thoughts. His thoughts are self-destruct. If you buy that lie, praise the Lord, like Job bought it. Job was afraid all the time. And that fear caught up with him. If he didn't buy that lie, if he was not afraid, if he threw back his thoughts, so your children, they, they have sinned. Do you know what they did last night? Please go and sacrifice. Otherwise, tomorrow they will die. That thought kept coming. And he kept doing it. Praise the Lord. And in spite of those sacrifices, his fear caught up with him. All the devil has is wiles, thoughts, which you can counter with the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody is going into a marriage, he's afraid. How is this marriage going to end up? Go and find from the Bible how it's going to end up. Don't ask your auntie that's not a believer. Praise the Lord. He will only tell you their experience. Praise the Lord. Go to the Bible and find out how your own will end up. Or better still, ask people that their own is working. And you will know there is nothing there. All you need to do is to continue to love your wife the way she is and to continue to submit your husband the way he is. And you do it continuously, continuously, every day and every day. Every, after a while, it becomes part of you. Praise the Lord. After a while, it becomes automatic. Praise the Lord. Finally, every member of the household of God, a thousand shall fall by their side and ten thousand by their right hand side, but it shall not come near them. Only with their eyes shall they look and behold the Lord of the wicked. God will put a mark of exemption to you today. In the name of Jesus. Do you know what it means by a thousand will fall on your side and ten thousand? Eleven thousand people die around you and yet it doesn't come near you. Praise the Lord. Only God can fortify like that in the mighty name of Jesus. So expect a mark of exemption. God has called today our covenant day of exemption. And you have returned to thank him for everything he has done this month. He will perfect all that concern you in the mighty name of Jesus. But you need to be a child of God. Let's be on our feet and just appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Don't just appreciate him. Tell him to give you grace to put to practice what you have heard. Nobody can learn for you. Nobody can go to school for you. Nobody can learn. Jesus said, come and learn of me. Come and learn of me. Come and learn of me. The more you learn, the more joy comes. The more joy comes, the more God speaks. 
the more God speaks, the more all the Assyrians are beating down. One day you look back and say, where are all my adversaries? But you need to be a child of God to begin with. Therefore, if you're here and you're not a child of God, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want God to work on your behalf and help you deal with all those adversaries. Can I see your hand raised up? If you're raising your hand, please come forward. Also, if you are a child of God before and you went back from following God and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, God is here with open arms to receive you. Please come also in that category. Come quickly. Come quickly and give your life to Jesus. Jesus is not condemning anyone. He brought you here to hear what you have heard. Please don't go back. Come and join our brother quickly. Come and join him. Don't be ashamed. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself away. My heart is not my own. It's not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself away. Quickly come and give yourself to Jesus. of surrender and repeat after me say Jesus I receive you today as my Lord and Savior come into my heart today and make me a new person come and live your life through me accept me into your family in the name of Jesus I pray father in the name of Jesus thank you for accepting him in the beloved Lord, from today, let your hand rest upon him in the name of Jesus. Every blessing he has had in this sermon, Lord, let him begin to enjoy it from today forward. Amen. Give him the grace, give him the courage to sit down with your word until he seeks into his spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for the Lord. Please follow our brother. Hallelujah. As we welcome our pastor. Clap for Jesus, make it loud. Have you been blessed at all? Lift up your hands and appreciate God. Give Him thanks. Give Him praise. Celebrate Him. Father, we thank You. We give You thanks. For the lights that have broken forth, appreciate Him. Celebrate Him. Father, we thank You. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. That amen can be stronger. Amen. Say, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow. Please hear this. There is a place called the secret place. If you are not saved, you are not safe. For you to be exempted, you must be one of those that are under the canopy of God. Say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs in their what? To be exempted, salvation is key. And it's not enough to have salvation. You must genuinely love God. You cannot claim to be serving God and serving Mamo. Because when you are in church, please be in church. Don't be in church and somewhere else. Because if you do it like them, it will happen to you like them. If you carry charms about, charms will also destroy you. Am I speaking to somebody here? If you listen to them and do it, you might say, I'm not doing it, it's my mother. If it's your mother, you are part of it. Don't do it like the world. The only net of safety is the name of Jesus. Except a man be born again, he cannot see exemption. I pray for someone here, you will not only be saved, you will remain saved. Amen. That amen can be louder. Amen. And I'd like us to also note 
that for you to enjoy exemption, you must have a mentality, the exemption mentality. You cannot be thinking trouble and not see trouble. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You must think exemption. You must think security. Because there is a mark on you. Let me look at your neighbor and say, there is a mark on your head. Job was not aware that there was an edge around him. No wonder the devil was able to attack him. Because he was afraid of trouble. And then trouble came. Refuse to fear. Look at your neighbor and say, refuse to fear. Tell somebody else, refuse to fear. Speak exemption. Think exemption. And act exemption. Now put that right hand on your head and declare. The mark of God is upon me. The mark of exemption. I cannot be destroyed. My business cannot be destroyed. My career cannot be destroyed. Somebody begin to declare. Begin to declare it. La brosesia tata. No evil can be for me. No evil can be for me. The mark of exemption is upon me. I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Somebody declare my business is protected, my career is protected, my children protected, my spouse protected. Leria Baba Bala Balados Mezo Catalia Parados Isias Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The same way the Israelites were severe away from trouble. I pray you and your family will be defended. Others might suffer calamity, but it will not come near you. Others might suffer rejection and depression, but it will not come near you. Other business might close down, but not your business. Someone who believes, let your amen show it. Whatever is happening to them in the world, it will not happen to you. Let your amen show it. I pray as a result of the mark of exemption that has come upon you. Every agenda of the wicked that is targeted against you and your household, they are utterly disappointed. Every forces that will rise against you, they will be condemned. He said if they come in one way, they will flee seven ways. Every arrows they launch towards your direction, return back to them. In the name of Jesus, you and your family, you are exempted. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Give Jesus a big hand and please take your seat. Look at your neighbor and say, no evil will befall you. Tell somebody else, it will not come near you. And to another person, you shall be far from oppression. Shout it louder. Amen. Just before we close from this second service, if today is your first time of watching with us, we love and appreciate you. We want to pray with you. And we also hand over some packages to you. Today is your first time of watching with us. Rise in your feet wherever you are as we pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Is somebody clapping for Jesus? Are you excited at all? Make that clap louder. Make it bigger. Hallelujah. Every one of us standing, just lift up your right hand as we pray. Father, we thank you for these precious people that you brought our way. Your grace brought them here today. May your grace establish them. May your grace say to them, in the name of Jesus, whatever is an issue of concerning their life is turned to testimony. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let God's people say, Amen. amen. Please, all our first timers, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Please follow the officer that is standing by your side. There are forms they will hand over to you. Those information will require them so that we can get in touch with you. And there are further packages to be given to you. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Let's give Jesus a big hand. 
The Chronicles of Miracles, both the English and French translation, is released for the blessing of mankind, beginning with you in the name of Jesus. Let's take note of the following important announcement. Operation 10 for Christ 2020 is ongoing. For somebody here, your own cloud will be full and your rain must fall. If that is true, your amen should show it. Our coming hour of prayer holds Monday to Friday, 6 to 7 a.m. And on Saturday, 8 to 9 a.m. On Wednesday, we'll be having our midweek communion service. And the time is 6.30 p.m. It's the last in the week, less in the month. Let's not miss it. And I pray for somebody here, there shall be no carryover. Amen. Don't forget on Saturday, we have our WSF meetings in our various WSF centers. And the time is 5 to 6 p.m. You don't have a center, you don't know a center that is close to you. Just ask at the protocol desk and they will guide you to one. Take notes. That water baptism we hold immediately after the talk service today at the youth center. And of course, we have the Youth Alive Revival Prayer that we'll be holding here at the auditorium after the talk service, 115 to 215. Join us as we pray, and I see God changing our levels in Jesus' name. Amen. That amen can be stronger. Amen. I said that amen can be louder. Amen. Good news. Good news. Next Sunday is the first of March 2020. And for somebody here, you are marching forward. And it's going to be a breaking generational curse service. For somebody, whatever represents a curse, I decree they are broken. You believe, rise in your feet and shout a believing amen. Shout a believing amen. So don't miss next Sunday service for a reason. And you are not coming alone, you are coming with someone. Let me tell you about I'm coming with someone. Lift up your hands and appreciate God. Celebrate him, give him the praise, his word. Give him the praise, give him the praise, his word. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Everywhere you appear this week, God will go with you. I said everywhere you appear this week, God will go with you. Our brother said, he just said the prayer. He did not know if it was going to happen. But there was a meeting because of him. Because of you. Those that matter, those that God have destined that they will bring it by your change of levels, they will not rest until they meet an end. Until they take that decision to change your levels, they will not have rest. You believe your amen will show it. Every time they gather together for your sake, it will be for your progress. It will be for your promotion. In the name of Jesus, every gang up that is not of God, they shall be scattered. This week is your week of blessings. It's your week of elevation. It's the last week in the month of February and the best is reserved for the last. I pray that heaven will release best to you. In your business, enjoy the best. In your career, enjoy the best. There shall be uncommon testimonies this week. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. For someone here who has been trusting God, your testimony is delivered this week. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Together we join excitement, surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. Then what eyes have not seen or ears yet shall be my, your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations. Now congratulate somebody next to you. God bless you. Praise the Lord.